Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Book Star Talk Show. Today is October second, Wednesday, nine o'clock a.m. San Francisco time. In sunny, sunny California. Good morning, Bartholomew. So you sent me an email. Um, I got an email. Is it about? Is it about jobs? Uh. So what is today's topic? If no topic, I'm going just go, going going to go random. Okay, uh, lots of topics to to talk about random stuff. So let's pop these out. Why do I have two of them? Shut down one of them. Shut this down. Pop it out again. And and I'm alive. Okay. And stop this video from playing, and let's just talk about things. Okay, go to the talk show page, show in browser, scroll down, and uh, let's start. Now, if you have a topic, anytime, just say say <laughs> good morning, Kathy. So, Kathy, any interesting things to talk about? Any anything you like to uh, me to talk about? Um, okay, so. So, some talk show. So let's see, the harmful. So yesterday we did we did a talk show that is uh, that is fantastic. Well, it's you know it's 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 pretty focused. So yesterday the topic is the rise and fall of XML, and with this mantra, the be be conservative in what you send, be liberal in what you accept. Now that is the most damaging mantra from the Unix, uh, from the Tech geeker from the hacker type of people, programmers, and uh, you know. So yesterday I I post this on Twitter. You know, after my talk. By the way, let me sh tell you guys. So if you are watching offline, you know, not live, you can always play my videos at one point two five speed or one point five speed. That's usually better, because I I I don't talk. You know, I. It's better. Okay, and also. Also, because uh, also, what I want to say, you know, feel free to jump around, and also, um, yeah, okay. So after the live talk, after live stream, usually after two hours, it will show up on YouTube with the chat, and usually after about four hours, I will uh, add the description in the description box, like. All the links we talked about in the video, like you know, for example, this is my website. I have a link, you know, several links we talked about story of XML, uh, and marquees, blink tag, SVN tutorial, things like that. You know, a list of topics, and usually I put that in the YouTube description as well. So if you watch my past videos, you can see it. I just begin about three minutes ago. Good morning, cool to. Cool for school. Too cool for school. <laughs> Good morning, Zitron Crazy. How are you doing? How how is your study? Uh, so let's close that. Reopen. Why is it okay? So close that. Reopen. It's not talk show. That's right. We are going to talk about. So yesterday I did. You know I started to do npm stuff. So let's see. Go through my tabs, okay. Go through my tabs. Programming blog, dev blog. Okay, yesterday I was, I did this. I think it's okay. So your schoolwork is okay. Great. Uh, now, if you don't, if you have uh, issues with math homework, <laughs> as you know, I'm Asian. I can help you. Well, y you are German. You know, German people. Are also well known as you know you have the so-called stereotype of being smart. You know German people are pretty smart. <laughs> you know so there there are stereotypes of different people, of course. Uh, but that's a kind of that's a sensitive topic. You know in USA in 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 these white countries they 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 oh my God they um they got things to say. But anyway, so back to back to npm. npm is a circus. Fuck. 
you know, it's NPM and not JS. Okay, not JS is you know, from technology point of view, not JS is not that good. Okay, but however, it's it came at the right time where you know, do you guys know why not JS is popular? It was become becoming all over the place. Not JS. Do you know? Uh, let me explain. If you don't know, I can do an explanation of that. So six people watching. Good morning, people. Kasali, not JS. Okay, not JS. Um, I have several articles about not JS, from technical to uh, fun. So not JS module, not JS tutorial. Uh, not JS module. What is this about? I don't remember. Let's look. And this annoying article. I'm about. I'm about as good as dead. Now this is, as I mentioned before, this is. This happened around 2013. Now it's on Hacker News, and it's also on my website, and it's everywhere. Like every time you search my name, that link will just be the first. Why? Because that's dramatic. Everyone, you know, like people who don't know what who who I am, you know, they may they may run into my video, Xali, right? And so they search, you know, who is this guy, Xali? And uh, <laughs> and uh, among the answers, you know, among the Google results or whatever, they will see this this link. I'm about as good as dead, and uh, they will click that first. That's why that link remains on top, you know, forever. Why do the why do people click that? Because that's dramatic, you know. That's oh, you know, that's dramatic. Uh, and uh, it's kind of annoying because it, uh, you know, it's kind of annoying. Uh, similarly, for you know, I have a nude picture of myself. Now I'm I'm sure some of you know about that you know and and that's you know that's just that's the that's the only almost it's it's like this dramatic things that's the only thing people <laughs> know about you they talk about all the time uh and meanwhile you know meanwhile and they ignore all the other things you have for example on your website you know i have for example on my website i have a few thousand articles but for example let's say you let's not say me let's say you because then good morning matt so matt do we have a topic let's say you okay so you create a website you write blogs for 10 years okay and you have let's say uh 5000 articles you've written now if there's one of them just one of them one of your blog posts that 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 has a nude picture of yourself okay you are talking about something and you show a nude picture of yourself now that <laughs> That one will be the v most visited page, you know, like the other page might have 100 views, but that page will have 10,000 views. And everyone, whenever people talk about you, it will be that page. Oh, look at it. Look at that guy naked there. You know, these are fucking idiots. This is a phenomenon. This is a general phenom phenomenon of human animals, okay? This is natural. This is this. There's really nothing wrong with it. Okay, it's just uh, the way things are natural. Because people, I mean, including myself, everyone, they, uh, in gen, you know, you just ends up, you know, you want to look at dramatic things, you know, alarming things, dramatic, alarming, or you know, things like that. That's just human nature. Okay, and and it has evolutionary reasons because for example alarming things like people are crying especially girls you know people are crying or girls are crying or someone got beaten those are alarming things because that that threatens news like that threatens your uh, safety you know your survival so you want to know about it if, if someone is crying or someone you know let's say a guy got beaten or some girl is crying you want to know about that because that's uh, that interests you and I su you know, I suppose for women too. You know, if you are women, you want to know some other girls. You know, uh, you know, are crying because maybe you you need to worry about that as well for safety. You know, for survival. 
so that's just the uh, natural behavior that's you know that's uh, we, we, we can say there's nothing wrong with that but however with te today's technology you know the communication the Twitter social networks and and also because the way they they want more traffic and you know a bunch of reasons like that therefore this kind this kind of things went out of proportions it, 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 it blow uh, blew out of proportions that's why today on on social network Facebook Twitter and other places every day you see is just angry stuff it's like all brain angry anger dramatic or clickbait memes brainless things and they get the most likes you know they get most likes anything that's of substance you get nothing uh, so so this is one aspect of human nature that got um, uh, that got that got what's the word magnified uh, there's a word I want to use I forgot that got you know magnified to uh, hundred times by because of technology now we now this part the second part the technology magnifying some certain rather not so good aspect of humanity or behavior that part is a bad part okay that part we can do something about we can change but you know it's it's getting worse because uh, these news websites you know this commercialization they you know they want to make money so they do all things they can including using psychology to create more traffic therefore more ads more money for themselves uh, Twitter Facebook and all that okay so let's talk about why not JS is all over the place and uh, let's catch up with the comments uh, morning morning Justine I only know you for Lisp and Emacs stuff and your Twitter okay great uh, Matt says currently having a nice pumpkin soup I'm here to look today pumpkin soup I don't think I ever had pumpkin soup but I have I like pumpkin pie though Pum pumpkin pie I I like pumpkin pie I because it's cheap <laughs> you know you can uh, usually around this time you know Halloween is coming so around this time you have pump pumpkin pie like this you can buy in a local uh, local shop Safeway over here uh, and it's you know it's as long as it's not too sweet it's pretty healthy you know it's just made of pumpkins so we're gonna let's talk about not JS okay the story of not JS uh, not JS modules uh, what is this oh yeah not JS modules this article is about the library system in JavaScript extreme complicated fuck uh, the evolution of JavaScript and uh, in particular the evolution of library systems and namespace in JavaScript <laughs> it's it's completely fucked up and and this article is a Node.js tutorial okay I studied Node.js for for like one year and uh, it, it's pretty simple so I did I wrote this in 2013 it's pretty simple okay Node.js I you can write a server <coughs> you can write a web server or chat server in like 50 lines 50 lines of code so I did that and I, I, I wrote a chat server in you know I wrote a chat server so you can go to a website it's not up now though um, do I have it somewhere here so you know you I have a web server you, you go to ksadi.info slash something something I forgot where then you can chat to people you know you just go there and chat yeah, maybe we can do that sometimes um, you know so you guys can go there and we can start a chat but however I haven't this is back in 2013 so it's like five years I haven't touched that stuff but okay but 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 we are talking we are going to talk about why not JS become popular 
so you know this is not a uh, this is not something this is actually something a lot of people know because so not just become very popular around 2008 okay 2008 to 2010 it becomes hugely popular you know uh, shooting to the sky and uh, the reason is that because not JS at the time not JS introduced to the world the idea of um, how do you say that um, Oh my God! I have the syndrome of not not able to think of the word or phrase whenever I'm talking. I think that's a problem with me, because because <laughs> when I'm I'm talking, I two people I forgot the names or phrase or things. But not okay. Not jazz is popular because it popularized the idea of a a paradigm of programming where. Where you have a synchronous, um, a synchronous, how do you say that? What's the phrase? Anyone can describe that. Like the the number one reason not JS become popular. There, there are basically two reasons. Okay, one is that it introduced introduced a synchronous programming. I, I think there's a proper term for that, but I forgot. Uh, so that's one of the reason. Yeah, and uh, the other reason reason is server side javascript okay server side ja javascript so that's a two reasons so popular says server side yes popular says and uh panel says concurrency it's not concurrency okay it's it, it's a uh, that's not concurrency now that's another topic very confusing you have concurrency you have parallel programming these two subjects are very different okay Parallel programming is just running, you know, programming in parallel. Like, you know, for example, 10,000 computers, that's parallel programming. Or running 10 programs at the same time, that's also parallel programming. Or, you know, I'm running a browser, I'm running YouTube, you know, I'm running uh, Emacs, that's also parallel program. Th that, well, that's also parallel computing, okay? But, uh, so that's parallel programming parallel you know you, you uh, mostly yeah you know you run things at the same time for, uh, that's parallel programming now concurrency is related to parallel programming but however it's entirely entirely different concurrency is about say it is about solving one specific problem uh, by using parallel programming, okay, but it's about solving one problem. For example, um, wait, um, how do I say this? Concurrency is about solving, yeah, basic, basically uh, solving a single problem uh, by parallel programming. Now, why, why is this different from just parallel programming? Because when you solve a single problem, as you know, let's say find all the prime numbers or factor of prime number, or 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 a serving website, you know, any any problem. Okay, when you solve a single problem using multiple processes or thread. Okay, let's not mention those. Those are more. That's because those are also very complex concepts. Okay, but anyway, when you want to solve one problem by using multiple you know, uh, CPU or multiple computing uh, resources. That's called concurrency, and uh, that's that's different. Just that's different from just running, you know, several computers because because concurrency usually you have the timing issue. Like you, for example, let's say let's say um, let's say you want to sort a list of numbers. Okay. Let's say you have a, a list of numbers, one to one hundred, in random random order. You want to sort it. Now, if you use normal programming, okay, non-parallel normal programming, you you just you know go you know you try to sort it. There are many algorithms sort the numbers. You know you compare two numbers, which one is bigger, move the small smaller one to front to the front, then you compare again. You know things like that. You know that's that's sorting. In a normal way. Now, if you want to do do this in a parallel way, 
you know, you, you, you immediately you begin to see a problem because you have to coordinate your, you know, different uh, CPUs. You, you need to coordinate. For example, one way is that, so you have 100 numbers, a list of 100 numbers. You, you split the list into two lists. You know, so this is 50 numbers here, and this is a list of another 50 numbers. Then you run your algorithm on each one, so you can have both of them sorted. But then, then you need to merge them. You you, you need to merge them back into a list. Then you need you you still need to sort them. You see, that's a problem. It's not trivial when you when you have an algorithm for some to solve some problem, solving equations, sorting a list, sorting uh, files or whatever. You cannot simply you know if you have ten CPUs, you you cannot simply just say do it on ten CPUs. You see, this sorting problem shows the example. You can't just do it. You have to, in fact, you have to change your algorithm. You, almost entirely, you have to re rewrite it. It's not going to be the same algorithm. So, 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 so this is about concurrency, con concurrent programming. Okay, that's a problem. That's actually that's a difficult part. Concurrency, concurrent programming, and and likewise today we have concurrent programming languages. Programming languages that that has features that helps with concurrent programming. Such as closure, uh, closure has that. Um, uh, Golan has that, uh, and other languages. Okay, closure, Golan. That's two two big examples. So, in summary, concurrency programming is about solving one problem using multiple uh, multiple programs. Meanwhile, parallel programming is about simply. You know, just just uh, run multiple programs, usually solving a problem as well. Okay. Right. So I, I did I did I uh, make that? D does that make sense? Uh, so and back to JavaScript. So back to Node.js. So I was saying Node.js became very popular for two reasons. One. Is that it? Inter it popularized the idea, the concept of, uh, the concept of um, uh, uh, what's the word I, again? Uh, okay, so right. Uh, so so not just introduced, popularized the concept of. Oh God, what's the word I just used before? Uh, not just. It um, asynchronous, okay, asynchronous. Not JS became popular for two reasons. One reason is that it popularized the concept of asynchronous programming. Okay, we can explain that. Now the other reason is because it's a JavaScript on a server. It's it's a, a web server. It it's a it's JavaScript designed to run uh, to write web servers. Now why is that important? You know, you can write a web server in C plus plus in Perl, Python. Why, why is why why sh why would anyone want to use JavaScript? Because now, if you if your server is also written in JavaScript, then your front end and the back end all are in the same language. That has advantages because you know it has several advantages. For example, all your programmers can. Can work on front end and back end at the same time, you know, uh, and also there's less less communication friction. You know, they say, uh, you know, the hacker types say arms impotence. Uh, have you guys heard of that uh, uh, that 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 phrase? Um, o M. How do you say that? O M. Um. Friction, basically, like when you try trying to convert OOP to functional programming, or vice versa, or between different languages in the same system, you have arms impotence. Uh, not impotence, but <laughs> there's another word. Um, guys, do you do you guys know what I'm talking about? Help me out. Say, it, type it. Um, 
o m z okay o o m z not o m z but something it's a electronic it's 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 a term from elec electronics where you have um you have voltage you have currency and you have o m z or something like that um that uh, I don't remember the terms, but anyway, that's it, it, not. It's it's what what are we saying? Yeah, so we were talking about JavaScript, uh, not JS. We were talking about why why is it advantageous to have to use the same language in both front end and server because then you have less friction. You know, one language uh, for everything. But there's a word. It's not omnipotence. Okay. <laughs> Impot impotent impotence yes i m p e d n c e i m p e d a n c e okay now we can try to uh, search that we will find it o m z speaker impotence okay speaker in electric electrical impotence 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 electrical impotence uh, and that's measured in OM, okay. So I mean O O H M this one, okay. So here here it is. Let's see uh, O M. This one Omega symbol. You see you see this part this 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 part, okay. O H M. Om. So th so you have this phrase Om impotence in Om impotence among the hacker types you know who those these are the people who are talking on hacker news or reddit all the time and they tell you what to do so they they have this phrase om imp impotent impotence uh let's see okay you need to type programming okay programming then you'll start to see articles that using that phrase uh why is that Okay, maybe yeah, I'm not finding an article, but anyway, I saw that this jargon sometimes uh, about maybe five years ago. I I I don't think I've seen it these days. Okay, so we were talking about why not JS was popular. So, two reasons, you know, JavaScript as a server language, and also the popular popularization of of uh, asynchronous programming. Okay. Async programming okay search in browser asynchronous programming Microsoft what is asynchronous programming now so so back to the topic so we were talking about parallel computing we, we were talking about concurrency Concurrency, okay. This, this, this concurrency programming versus parallel programming—that's a frequently asked question. Like, if you search this, you'll see lots of articles. Uh, and I have a article as well. Uh, so this is a big topic. So if you are not familiar, you should get familiar with it because it's a very, um, uh, very. Um, common question uh, and also it's kind of advanced because it's it's likely okay for all your life in programming you will not run into that issue you will not be doing concurrency programming you will not be doing parallel programming okay although these are things you know you see them talked about all the time because it's dramatic it's like oh the future blah, 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 you know the functional programming or whatever but but in practice it's it's not a common uh, thing you have to worry about parallel programming or concurrency programming. 
Yeah, but it's dramatics. That's why. So closure. Oh, closure is designed for concurrency. You know, the, you hear that in Golan. But in practice, uh, as an average programmer, that's not something you have to worry about. Uh, unless, of course, unless you are working on s some special, some 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 project that requires that. And it becomes more and more common because you know today for the past ten years the CPU has not been able to be faster you know because the the transistors in CPU has become smaller and smaller to basically reaching the limit it cannot be no longer be can become smaller anymore and so you know like in from 1990s to 2010 the CPU speed increases every year you know every every year or two years you know you have uh you have 1000 hertz then 100 you know then 2000 hertz 3000 hertz and today we are pretty much stuck with 3000 hertz so the cpu speed does not increase anymore but however you started to have more cpus you know so you have like they call it core like multi core you know basically one cpu but you have actually uh several cores cores are basically a cpu unit so Emery Berger has a good recent talk about this. Okay, I don't know who is that. Uh, uh, I don't mind search it. Good morning, two four. Okay, so w what are we talking about? I wanted to show you. Uh, con yeah, okay. So concurrency programming and parallel programming, they are different things. Okay, in fact, there's also a Wikipedia article, and actually, I have an article I want to show you. Uh, parallel programming problem ask so th this actually this problem is a good example of good example of a task for parallel programming and uh, in fact it's a um, it's it's concurrency issue as well so y y you can like read it um, but I wanted to show you the article where I talk about concurrency and parallel programming is this one. Okay. Now, Guy Steele. Guy Steele. Now we digressed. We haven't got into the article about the not JS. Um, there's a funny video I want to show you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So hold on a second. So we have multiple digression topics here. Okay. So you explain that. So, so first of all, this article, Guy Steele, okay, so, and I want to talk about, uh, I want to show the article about not JS video, okay, uh, of, a, of a synchronous programming, okay, there's a very fun, funny video, and, and that, that went viral about 10 years ago. And okay, meanwhile, and let's go here. Let's go to um, let's go to find. This is a GoLang script. This is my GoLang script, and let's type. Let's search in this directory. Let me show you over here. Let's move it here. So let's show you. In Sali info directory, we want to search for uh, not. JS. Okay, let's see. Mm. Well, actually, we don't want to search all the file names. So actually, just go to my my directory. So this is Sali info. Find, magnify. Actually, open a new window. Sal start command log mod. So you see all my Emacs command calls there. Find name nod okay html any file that contains nod then we will find it and meanwhile okay there's actually not uh, not too many okay ryan Dow on history of node.js very interesting ryan Dow is a very interesting guy i talked about this a few times he's the inventor of node.js and he is a mathematician. He is a you know PhD student. You know he's a real mathematician. So he studied 
uh, K theory, something very uh, esoteric. So he's a mathematician, and he he's 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 a great, a very uh, powerful, very capable guy, and he just dived into programming, and he just created Node.js out of the blue, like within two years of programming experience, and you know he's a very uh, bright guy. He was a uh, uh, studying PhD, and he got bored. You know, when you study math, when you study math, when you dive like beyond, you know, when you're doing PhD at that level, basically the things you are talking about, nobody understand. Okay, you you can't even explain to people because you you can kind of explain, but they nobody understand it. To un to to actually convey some minimal degree of real understanding takes you know takes takes like a few days of talking you know if if, if for example I, I can you know yeah so that's that's math you know so he was studying math nobody understanding it, it, it's like that when you study math but however the subject matter is kind of extremely beautiful you know you just you just live in it that is why many mathematicians are kind of these mad you know uh, uh, guy. So anyway, he he was a mathematician, and he his ideas about about programming are very interesting. I like them. I share with his uh, views, uh, and similarly, he also flames. You know, like like the technology, the programming languages we have, the Unix system. That's all crap. Okay, what we have every day you work with. That's that's extremely complicated. Fuck. You know, it's a it's a fucked up fuck system. The worst possible that's what he says exactly that is my opinion as well and then you have this you know these hacker types that tells you what to do they think oh everything is great oh you should use you know <laughs> not js or functional programming or c++ the unix fox unix people you know that that's like that so so anyway i, I highly recommend you know you watch uh you know uh, ryan Dow. he's uh, now working for google on some uh, machine learning AI stuff. Uh, so what I want to show, okay, history of Node.js, okay, that, um, okay, we got, um, so let's go to talk page and uh, we, and here is today, we, let's link by that article and let's show some of the others. Uh, Navigate, uh, not uh, not JS tutorial. Oh, this one. Wait, yeah, this one. Th this video. That's the one I'm trying to find. Okay, I'm going to show you. Um, let's go to the talk page. Uh, paste it here, and there is another thing I want to sh show. I think this this one. Yeah. So paste it here, linkify. Okay. Close, close the shell, and show in browser. Yeah. So there are a few videos I'm going to show you. So not JS. I recommend his stuff. Okay. I I mean the Ryan Dow, not 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 JS. Okay, Ryan Dow. I recommend his his videos you know whenever he's got a video go watch him that's what I do I, I watch his videos uh, uh, you know I respect his opinions I uh, you know things like that but not JS is is not necessarily a good thing you know okay yeah we we wanted to explain the idea of asynchronous programming so what is it what is a, uh, asynchronous programming? Okay, you watch this <laughs> video. This video is very interesting. Okay, this video happened around 2013. It went viral. Okay, so it's you 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 may already have seen it. So let's let's show you the um, let's show you the URL. Okay, so now let's go to that URL. Okay, then let's watch that. Uh, well, I'm not gonna play the whole thing. You might have seen it, but uh, you know. But you just go to this URL. You can watch it, okay? Uh, but 
Okay, so this video, the whole video is like that. It's a kind of a 3D uh, animated cartoon. So these two bears are talking. They are talking about Apache versus not JS uh, versus um, ng uh, new uh, ng inx. That's a web server. Okay. Basically, they were talking about you know not JS introduced the idea popularized at least the idea of asynchronous programming and uh, you know that is that is kind of one the, the big reason that Node.js become popular and also it's a dramatic reason because because that concept you know it's like one of the jargon all the programmers are talking about it is it really good you know so you have like half programmers saying oh this is the greatest invention since sliced bread then the other half of programmer says, no, that's the worst thing. That's, you know, that's what compilers are for, you know, things like that. And so this, this video uh, is kind of a comic uh, video that captures the, um, the humor, you know, of the de debate. So, okay, so, so that, that is what I wanted to talk, and talk, you know, that, that is the video I want to show. And actually, so these two bears are chatting, you know, back and forth. <laughs> it's very funny. And I did a full transcription of their dialogue. Okay, so for example, you know, the bear, you know, the, the red lines are from the black bear, okay. And the the uh, the yellow bear is talking about Apache, you know, like any okay. So he's giving a lecture and he asks, okay, any questions? Then comes up this brown bear. Brown bear ask ask, you know, what about not JS, you know? And the 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 bear tries to answer, oh, that's good, but because you know, so Apache don't use that or something like that. Then the brown bear <laughs> kept saying things, you know. It's like the way when you have a new jargon in programming community, such as so many examples over the past twenty years, thirty years, you know, in Perl you have you have ten, tens of jargons, as you know, you know, laziness, laziness. Uh, you know the language as you know human language like English you know full of words somehow being a good thing you know and laziness is a uh, is a uh, a good property of programmers things like that that's from Perl then you have um, then you have patterns you know programming patterns oh programming is like your architecture you know the, you know patterns then then later on you have anti patterns you know all these fucking jargons factory pattern or whatever pattern snake oil your pattern you know pattern is no good okay it's the worst shit it's a it's a code don't i don't i don't do anything i don't uh, do anything with the patterns shit it's a, it's an entire nonsense okay Pro programming patterns i can you know we can talk about that some other day for one hour programming patterns but you see, when when it's popular, programming patterns is popular around year two thousand. Okay, two thousand to two thousand ten. It's everywhere. Like every programmer is talking about patterns. Oh, oh, you should pattern this, pattern that. Oh, that is called pa pattern something something. Today you don't hear it much anymore. You know, you come and go. All these programming fucks. And so patterns. Then you have extreme programming, pair programming, agile. So extreme programming came first. It started around year two thousand. Okay, uh, then you have pair programming is all part of extreme programming. Then extreme programming evolved into agile. It is just, it's pure garbage. Okay. Uh, then then oh yeah then then the unit testing fuck. Okay, the unit testing. It's a it's crap. Okay, it's a snake oil. You, you, you almost never never do unit testing. Okay. You know that that should not be taken literally 
Now I'm not saying、uh, when it comes to unit testing, you know, forget first of all, forget about the fucking jargon. Unit testing, test your ass. Okay. Yes, you can write programs to to test your software. That's good. Okay. And that's、uh, that's sometimes、uh, necessary in big big project. And also that is very suitable when you have certain、uh, software. Very suitable. For example, when you shoot spaceships to the Uh, to the moon, you you need to, you can use lots of that. Mathematica, for example, Mathematica Wufan Research, they have you know testing you know software that tests software back in nineteen nineties. I know that you know the entire system, build system, test system, to test math math Mathematica whenever there's a new version com coming out. Okay, before that's before you have the jargon unit testing. Fuck the unit testing, okay? Because first of all, fuck the jargon, okay? Don't, don't ever, don't, don't buy into the jargon unit testing, because jargons often it's a case when you have a code, you re, jargon is one of the element, one of the pillar that that、uh, pushes the code, that grows the code. So typically, almost always, code always have lots of jargons associated. Associated with it, so jargons usually you want to avoid. Similarly, like I I talked about this many times in Haskell, you have monad, you know, in, in monad querying in in scheme Lisp, you have tail recursion, you have call CC, in 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 common Lisp, you have uh, uh, macros, you know, macros, and you know, all the time macros, everything is macros. The whole universe is fucking macros. Then in, in not JS, for example, JavaScript, you have async programming. You have this callback、uh, function. This is all idiotic. Then agile, of course, unit testing. You know, so first of all, when whenever you see jargons that's popular, so, you know, rose up in programming, you, it's probably bad. Okay, that's probably bad, and it's probably likely associated with code. In Emacs, for example, for example, in Emacs, you have meta, meta fucking key. You know, if he, it's it's almost like when you think of that jargon, then you immediately think of the thing it's associated. You know, so meta key, Emacs, uh, and and also scratch buffer, Emacs, and, and those two are no good. It's no good. Okay. Uh. So so jargon. So we were talking about unit testing. Okay, that's. Testing is good. Unit testing, testing is is it's not bad idea, but not the way, you know, not not the way average programmers perceiving it. Because why why it becomes a code? Because money, you know, these you have you have thousands of、uh, corporations that sell that try to consult or sell help help your company do agile, you know. So it is them. This this、uh, usually small corporations like thousands of them. They are pushing agile. They are pushing agile to make money for themselves. So they tell you that is why it spread. It becomes a code. That's why you know the agile people say, "Oh, you should do this, this, this." You know, it becomes you know it spread. They 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 spend money to advertise. You know, that's why it washes your brain. That's why agile is、uh, zero value. Okay, I I I I'll just say it blunt bluntly. Zero. You know, it's it's. The the way you um, the way you should okay. If you like to follow my opinions, the way you should I I say that the way you re you the way you should react to agile, or is is that you should you know it's it's like treat it as a crime. That、uh, okay. So when when your friend says agile, you say that's a that's a criminal. That's a crime. There's no um no yield to it. Okay. That that's you know. That's about agile, okay. Now, of course, when 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 this kind when when codes become big, okay, often often your friend will be part of it, because like like online, you know, you sometimes you talk to your friend, and sometimes yeah, and your friend will say, oh, actually, no, actually, actually agile is not bad. Actually, I like it very much. <laughs> so you got the problem, you know. Your friend is saying that. Or for example, my my friends, my acquaintances and followers. A lot of them will be into Unix philosophy. They every time something comes up, they'll tell, "Oh, you should do it this because small is beautiful. Because 
kiss, you know, keep it simple, stupid, you know, this bunch of jargons. So there's nothing you can do. There's not, not much you can do it, do with it. You know, codes, you know, they spread. Uh, just like politics, you know, politics, you always have someone, your friends, who does not believe what you believe. S similar with religion. Now let's now also remember these topics there's no absolute answers okay so so there's no uh it's not it's not absolutely tr true that you know whatever you believe is <laughs> correct of course but anyway the back to agile it's it's just it's a it's just a snake oil okay in my opinion uh Okay, so we talked about this article. We, t we asynchronous programming. Yeah, asynchronous programming. Uh, now, this is important to remember. Asynchronous programming. Asynchronous programming, the way not JS or JavaScript is doing, they have, they, they have nothing to do with uh, concurrency or parallel programming. Asynchronous programming is not parallel programming at all, okay? At all, you know, it's, this is a important issue, and this is also, you know, it's, it's frequently talked about issue, so you need um, explanations about that. I, I, I have explanations about that. Um, you know, because this is a big confusing issue to many JavaScript programmers. Now, okay, here's the thing. Here's the answer. In JavaScript, and also not JS, okay, JavaScript doesn't matter it's running on not JS or running in browser. JavaScript is so-called single thread, okay, single thread. So at no time, it's not parallel at all. No time it's parallel. Therefore, it's not it nowhere is it concurrent okay it's it's no no nothing like that then what what is asynchronous programming so the javascript asynchronous programming is kind of it's just um for example for example let me give you an example when you uh have a program you need to when when people log into your website right they type a login name you know email address and password then you take that you net you need to query the database you know you you send a query to the database to see if that user exists right so you send the query to database you have to wait for it to come back you know everything else stops your program stops your the whole software stops wait for the answer from the database then the database come back with the you know send back the username password then you then you start to run again you know check if it's valid or not okay now this is normal now in asynchronous programming what you do is that okay you got the name and password you you now you query the database but you don't wait you don't wait for the database to come back okay you don't wait for it rather you continue you continue what with whatever you have to do with your program uh, then when when the database send back the result you have a function that takes that result and do whatever it's supposed to do that is that is asynchronous programming actually we can we we can show some code in javascript um to show you how that works but anyway anyway that's about asynchronous programming okay so remember it has nothing to do with uh parallel programming it's, it's it is not parallel programming and also in javascript everything is single thread so called th single thread meaning everything is just running running in sequence at no time it's running two things at the same time okay then but but how do you when you, you know i just mentioned you wait for the database to send you a result how does that work okay it works like um so you have to now we have to explain event loops that's another very interesting topic uh that that you know that will take some time to explain so but essentially okay the the co the I, the the reason that you could have asynchronous programming you know asynchronous programming 
the reason you this is possible, the, me, the mechanism behind a, a synchronous programming is event loops. Now that that's another thing we uh, we we have to explain. Okay, so let me see. So comments, questions, post it. Okay. And now if you don't get, if if you want to keep uh, explain something, you know, just questions, just post it. Okay, so we are about one hour. So we talked about. Okay, so that's. Okay, we I you know that's that's about that. So okay, back to this article. On this in this article, Guy Steele. Guy Steele is the very famous, you know, one of the most popular Lisp expert. He he created Scheme Lisp. Uh, yeah, and he you know he he's a among Lisp programmers, he's a big shot. He he wrote several books and so on. So at one time he gave a talk. Uh, and uh, you can read this article and also okay. Here is parallel computing versus concurrency problems. Okay, so note that parallel note that parallel programming and concurrency problem are related but not the same thing. Parallel computing is about writing code that can run that can use multiple CPUs. Okay, concurrency problems is about problems of concurrent computations using the same resource or time. Yes. Uh, and you have the issues like race condition, file locking. You know, file locking. You you understand. For example, if 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 I'm going to for ex yeah, let me explain one problem of concurrent concurrent problems in programming. So I'm going to write create an editor. Okay, I'm going to create an editor. Uh, I'm going to create an editor on the web. So so people can edit it, the same document at the same time. You know you have Google Docs that does does that. Okay. So if I go there and I edit, and you go there, you also edit. Then you have a problem. I mean, if we are editing the same sentence, what will happen? It will become garbage, right? I I type something, it will become garbage. That is the problem of concurrency programming. You need to. So you see, you have this kind of a uh, time. Conflict, like like who is doing this? Who is doing this thing at the moment? And another problem is banking. For example, banking. So, so, so suppose suppose I'm of you know I have me and my brother for for example share the same bank. So I deposit. Meanwhile, he's withdrawing at some other location. Which one comes first? You know. If if I deposit, if he withdraw first, there's not enough money. But you know, so if I deposit first, then he can withdraw. But what happens if they happen at the same time? Which one you know is supposed to be first? That's kind of the uh, problem with a uh, of a classic problem of concurrent program concurrent programming problems. Uh, is five. File locking, okay. So okay, so so let's see the comments. So Max Serrator says, when you do shell scripting, do you use Emacs Lisp, or would you use Go for system administration scripts? Okay, that. That kind of depends. Okay, basically, I would not. I do not recommend Emacs Lisp uh, for shell for sh for shell scripts. Rather, you use Python, Ruby is far better. You can also use GoLang, but it's not as good as Python or Ruby. So, so shell scripting use Python, Ruby, Perl. Okay, that's much better. And you can also use Bash. You know the only reason you want to use Bash is, is for example, if you want to have a installer program, then you use Bash because other people don't have to install Python, Perl, or Ruby. You know, usually they have Bash. You know, in you know, that is why. But other than that, if you don't care about, if it's not an installation script, then don't use Bash. Okay, Bash is no good. 
uh, so use Perl, Python, Ruby, okay, Perl, Python, Ruby. Now, Golang is also good, Golang is also pretty good, but, but I, 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 I realized, I realized that uh, Golang code will be twice, twice as much lines than Python or Ruby, you know, that's for my experience, because I started to use Golang for all my scripting needs. For example, I have this, I have this uh, Golang script. This is 160 60 lines of code, and this script, what it does is it uh, find find strings. For example, let's find Node.js. Okay, Node.js. You know, let's uh, find string Node.js in in this directory. And that directory has like um, thirty thousand files, among which it has about uh, five thousand, you know, four thousand HTML files. So anyway, let's run it. You know, so we, we are searching all files, all HTML files, all HTML files in this directory, searching for this word. This word not dot js it's done okay uh, no it's not done yet okay so now it's done okay here's here's the answer it, it says done at the bottom you see now let's call xar find output mod so it's colored now I can you know now so here here are the result you know so it's written in this that is written in Golan you just you you have seen uh, this this script hundred sixty lines of code in Golan and uh, it's pretty fast you know we we have searched um, 5,000 files okay and you can jump to it you know you can jump to for example I just open that then here is the here is the occurrence of that word not JS uh, show in browser okay so it's my blog in 2013 uh, close that back to you know so you can jump to yeah so here's a result you can you can go down to the next occurrence or go down by file by next file next file so you see so I have lots of files that mentions the word not JS so now in Emacs we can do uh, list matching lines okay let's do list matching lines okay list matching lines xar slash web so now you see all the files that contains the word uh, and their occurrence. So for example, this file has 16 occurrence of the word Node.js. You know, so that's Golan. So what I'm, but I was saying that in Golan, by the way, you can find this script on my Golan tutorial page. Uh, you can find it here. Okay, examples find replace okay so here's a script in Golan that does find and replace okay so this one is more it's more it, it, it can replace things let me type it in my uh, in my Xar talk show page okay so what I'm saying is that in Golan typically I, re I realized that the lines of code, the number of lines of code will be at least 1.5 times more than Python. So in Python, if it's 100 lines, in Golang it's 150 lines, or double, or 200 lines. So that's kind of uh, annoying. So if you are writing shell scripts to manipulate, you know, do string processing or manipulate files, directories, Perl, Python, Ruby are better. But Golan, you know, Golan is uh, faster, uh, you know, so if you don't mind uh, extra lines, Golan is okay. But what, what about Emac Lisp? I do not recommend, okay, because for, for about five years, five to ten years, uh, I think I may, I may have talked about this in an older video, for about five to ten years, I have the mindset where from now on, I'm going to write all my shell script in Emac Lisp. Okay, I did that for 10 years. I have a lot of articles about that. Uh, a lot of articles. I, I have like three three articles at least about that. 
somewhere somewhere here okay it's somewhere e emag is miscellaneous um, where I have written down my experience uh, it's easier if you if we just search for Xali uh, emac shell script don't use emac list for shell script why because first of all it's going to be five times slower than Python okay five times slower slower than any of Python Ruby Perl and it's and it is um, and and the regular expression in Emacs Emacs list is a pain in the ass because if you do shell script you typically you often use regular expressions in Emacs list you have backslashes too many of them it's very annoying yeah so in general these two reasons so I do not recommend Emacs list at all and also Emac this if you really consider it compared to other languages it's like 10 times worse okay now I have a video talking about how Emac this sucks this that's one hour about you know it's truly it's no exaggeration let's say two times three you know it's worse it's by a magnitude you don't have libraries you don't have name space you don't have nothing okay Max Serator. Um Okay, so any other questions addressed to me? I'm trying to avoid Twitter, okay? So, okay, I think that's it for today. Oh, I got 18 people. Usually, it's more and more people when, when I'm about done. Okay, that's it for today, I think. Let me finish the comments a few more minutes. So, what did I miss anything? Uh, let's see if we can find run Emac Lisp script in shell. Yeah, that's a tutorial about how to run Emac Lisp script as a as a you know the same way you do running Python, Ruby, Perl. Uh, how to run JavaScript? What which language to learn? Perl, Python, Ruby, batch script to validate matching brackets. Okay. For example, let me show you a Emac script uh, that creates. Um, sitemap actually I did that in my past videos so it's not you know I have that in in Golang and also in Emac Lisp okay close that guys still we talked about guys still I so if you are a Lisp fan okay read this page this is a very good article I mean mostly it's by guys still okay he gave a talk about get rid of cons you know cons is another lisp uh, fanatism thing they want cons you know in, in fact it's the worst it's a what it's one of the most damaging idea in in computers in programming okay cons lisp cons you know if you don't know Lisp, okay now in other languages such as Python Ruby Perl JavaScript Golang you have a data type you have a type of the language it's named array in Golang it's named slice or uh, in Python Ruby it's just array sometimes it's called list okay basically just you have a list of things now and usually it's usually you can change you know you can add more items so you know so it's not fixed array like uh, in C okay so you have this list data type now, but in list, in list, I mean in Lisp, Lisp programming languages, when you have a list, they are actually in list in Lisp programming languages. They don't actually have a list data type. Rather, you have what's called a cons pair. Okay, this is the most idiotic fuck in the entirety of programming. Uh, technology the most idiot, idiot, idiotic fuck the disperse and here I'm showing you the article by Guy Steele not Ksali not the idiotic idiot Ksali okay not not the troll Ksali but Guy Steele 
Guy Steele, this honorable person, tells you the lisp fuck fuckers, lisp phonetic fuckheads. Get rid of cons, okay? Now I'm borrowing his article to show my opinion. I've I've written about this before. I've written quite a few articles about this lisp cons, okay? So in in lisp languages, you don't actually have a list. Wherever you have a list, however, you act, what you have is this cons, okay? What so what is a cons? Cons is basically like a pair, okay? So think of think of a data structure like a list. However, you have a limitation where you can only have two items, okay? So 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 you just have two items, okay? Two items. That's that's a data structure. That's called cons, okay? So what? But what if you want three items? You want a list with three items, okay? What you do is that you nest the cons in a particular way, this way, okay? Upper left, upper right, this way. So you have a cons. The second element is another cons, okay? Then in that cons, the second element is another cons. This is how you have a list, okay? Like a list, okay? So that's that's that that's what happens in Lisp programming languages. You use cons to create a list. Okay, the most fucking idiotic uh, technology in programming languages. To this day, the Lispers don't get it. Like like they say they they see this article, you know, like some, the Lisp programmers, you know, some, they are expert. You know, some of them know, you know. The, Better than me for sure. They 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 know common list. I don't know common list. They for example they know many of them know Emacs list better than me. Okay, no doubt. I don't question that. But however, but what happens if you have them reading this article? So what happens if you have Lisp phonetics who are also Lisp experts who read this article? I'll tell you what happens. <laughs> they will just brush it away. The way they brush it away is like. The Unix philosophy phonetic fuckheads. When they read uh, uh, some article by uh, that criticizes Linux, for example, they will just brush brush it away. Like <laughs> they they will find reasons. Oh, that's not important. You know, they read they read it and they forgot. By tomorrow, they will totally forgot about it. It will not register in their brain. Like this article. Okay, so. So you have a if you have you know ask your you know if you have a Lisp fanatic who is also a Lisp expert okay if he read you know this guy steel article he'll just brush it away okay yeah 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 he will say like oh yeah it makes sense yeah um, but <laughs> by tomorrow he forgot all about it then. By next day, he'll tell other people, "Yeah, this cons, this cons is the greatest thing since sliced bread." You know, you should use cons. <laughs> That's what they do. Same thing happens in religion, in codes. You know, in programming languages. You know, you have these. You you just you don't you don't you don't see things that's. Uh, you know that's that's not that doesn't benefit you. You know, so yeah, let's not. Let, let me talk about this a little bit, okay? Now, some of you, okay, yeah. Let me talk about this, okay? So in Lisp, you have cons, okay? Cons is a built-in type of the Lisp language, which is used to build list, okay? Now this is this happens in Lisp. Now, now. In the subject area of computer science, in the area of data structures, you have you also have something called list or linked list. Okay, usually we just say list, but usually technically it means linked list. Okay. Now, what is a linked list? Linked list is kind of just like cons. Okay. You now here we are talking about memory addresses. We're talking about memory addresses, and uh, you know, so we have a pair of address. The second address, the content of the second address holds the address of another pair of things, and that pair, the second element, holds the address of another pair of things. Okay, that's basically that's 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 linked list. 
Now remember, we the linked list is a concept in computer science. Okay, in 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 kind of a it's not it's not even mathematics. It's kind of a hardware. It's an implementation issue. You need a CPU. You, you you need a first of all you need a computer hardware to talk about linked list. Okay. Anyway, so it's a computer science area. Computer what well, practical applied computer science thing. Linked list. Now the cons in list languages. Now that's a language design kind of thing. That's or, or historical, you know, in the you know why why does this have cons? That's because back then, in nineteen sixties, you have hardware that's actually cons. Okay, hardware, not today, you know. But back in nineteen sixties, you have hardware, list machines. Okay, actually, you have cons. Okay, that I mean, like correspond to memory. You have a memory of you know things like that. Anyway, so remember, these are two separate things. One is a a type, okay, a a data type, a building data type in a programming language, cons. The other th concept is more general. It's about implement implementing a list, the data structure list in a pro in, in in you know of a programming language in in hardware, okay, linked list. The the two so concepts are entirely different, okay. Similar, somewhat similar, but they are separate. So what I'm saying, okay. So, for example, let me tell you an example. In Python, in Perl, in Python, Perl, Ruby, JavaScript, these four languages I know I can say on this. In these four languages, you don't have cons. You you don't have in these languages. You don't have a data type that's just a pair of number, pair of things. You don't have that. Well, in Python you have tuple. That's a different thing. But anyway, tuple can be you know two or three items or more. Anyway, so you don't have cons in these languages. But however, if you want a list, if you want a linked list, the concept of the computer science applied computer science concept of linked list data structure, you can. What do you do? Uh, you can. You can. You can. You you can implement it. In many ways, for example, you can just use a list, you know, array or whatever you call them. You know, in 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 Python, for example, you can use a list of two items, then the second item linked to a variable. That's another list of two items, things like that. So you can you can implement list, uh, linked list in any language. Okay, so it's it um. Okay, so anyway, so I think maybe I should stop today. Um, I I want to say what I want to say is that this you know people get confused about cons and linked list. Okay, they are two entirely separate concepts. For example, Haskell people then they some Haskell people they idiots. Okay, basically they 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 haven't studied the issue. You know, typical. I'm talking about the most average programmers. They will say. For example, Haskell programmers, when they see this, they'll say, "Oh no, you are wrong." Because even in Haskell, list is made of cons pair. <laughs> okay, no, you don't have first. You don't have. You know that's that's wrong. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I need to explain this. Explain this, but um, I'm thinking I should stop today. Uh, so yeah, one hour and twenty minutes. I should stop today. I can I I should explain this in code in you know in this is important because um so anyway just remember implementation y you have several different concepts okay Haskell don't have cons okay Ruby Python Perl they don't have cons you, you if you want a list you can have a list okay it's built in in the language you know a list whether it's linked and by the way they are usually not implemented as a linked list. They are implemented as a smart array, okay? Which means when you have when you add an element that's beyond the current array size, the compi the, the it, it it will automatically create a new array that have more empty slots, you know. And but however, it pretends 
you know it doesn't show the empty start it hides the empty start so anyway it gets into details about implementation okay but anyway in Perl Python Ruby Perl Python Ruby Mathematica JavaScript at least in all these five languages they have a list you know the jargon depends on the language you can call it a list or array basically smart array okay so so that basically it means you can add any items you can add more items if you want or you can shrink you know remove items you can do that without having to you know without having to create a linked list yourself or anything you, you know you just add items DD item append append or you know truncate you know it's high level high level you don't have to worry about how it is implemented you don't have to worry about cons okay you don't have to worry about all that so so let me just finish by saying you know these are just let me finish by saying yeah these are different cons you know you look into detail study into detail you know s try to formalize try to you know then you understand you know what all these confusing concept cons linked list uh, implementation array what's exactly their difference which one actually entails the CPU memory architecture you know like if some of these concepts they are related to actual machine you know some are some of them are not you know they are just about a language for example when you talk about linked list usually it's a, it's we are talking about implementation on some hardware linked list the you know the linked are about memory addresses they are usually not about for example in python just you know implementing a linked list yourself anyway there are many issues okay just uh, uh, that's <laughs> that's that about that okay so <laughs> okay that's it thank you guys for watching if you like my stuff support me okay put money in my pocket you go to patreon you go to okay let me let me show you this you go to you um you use bitcoin okay bitcoin bitcoin me so i got bitcoin here uh my paypal my patreon and Amazon gift card or stuff. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, uh, um, you guys. Bye.